All praise is due to Allah, the Lord of all worlds, who says in his ever glorious book, Allah will be well pleased with the first immigrants and helpers and those who followed them in good deeds, and they will be well pleased with them. He has prepared gardens graced with flowing streams for them, there to remain forever. That's the supreme triumph. I bear witness that there is no God but Allah and that our master Prophet Muhammad is his votary and messenger. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, his household, companions, and upon those who follow their path till the day of judgment. The Almighty Allah has chosen his prophets and messengers, peace be upon them from among his creation. As he glory be to him, said, Allah chooses messengers from among the angels and from among men. Allah is all hearing, all seeing. The Almighty Allah chose for his messengers their companions to aid and support them in conveying the message of their Lord. For our Prophet Muhammad, Allah has selected noble men with pure hearts who believed in his message, supported him, and followed the enlightening message he brought. Companion Abdullah ibn Mas'ud said, Verily, Allah looked into the hearts of people and found the heart of Muhammad, peace be upon him, to be the best of all hearts. So he chose him for himself and sent him with his message. Then Allah looked into the hearts of people after Muhammad and found the hearts of his companions to be the best hearts. So he made them the ministers and representatives of his prophets and fought for his religion. Thus, what the Muslims regard as good is good in the sight of Allah, and what they regard as evil is evil in the sight of Allah. The companions, may Allah be pleased with them, were the purest in their faith, the most knowledgeable, the best in their conduct. They conveyed the message of Islam to the farthest places with wisdom and good admonition. Therefore, they deserved this position. Commenting on Allah's saying, Say, Prophet, praise be to Allah, and peace be on the servants he has chosen. Ibn Abbas said, The chosen ones are the companions of the Prophet, peace be upon him. They are the ones who received the message of Islam from its original source, and never deviated from that path. The life of the companions included many bright stances that represented a practical application of genuine Islam, including their mercy. The Prophet, peace be upon him, taught his companions how to be merciful. Once, Omar ibn al-Khattab kissed one of his sons, Awayna ibn Hussain, saw that and commented, Do you kiss your sons while you are the commander? If I were the commander, I would not have kissed my sons. Omar replied, what should I do if Allah has removed mercy from your heart? In this situation, Omar followed the example of the Prophet, peace be upon him. When he kissed his grandson, Al-Hasan, and one of his companions commented, I have ten children, and I never kissed any of them. The Prophet said, can I put mercy in your heart after Allah has removed it? Then the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, he who is not merciful to people, Allah will not be merciful to him. The companions were an example in their forgiveness. One of the best examples here is the story of Abu Bakr with his relative, Mistah ibn Athatha. When some people, including Mistah, accused Aisha, the daughter of Abu Bakr, of, with adultery, Allah revealed the Quranic verses acquitting her. Abu Bakr as siddiq who used to provide for Mustah some financial aid because of his relation to him, said, By Allah, I will never give anything in charity to Mustah. After what he said about Aisha, then Allah revealed, Those who have been graced with bounty and plenty should not swear that they will no longer give to kinsmen, the poor, those who immigrated in God's way. Let them pardon and forgive. Do not, do not you wish that God should forgive you? God is most forgiving and merciful. On that, Abu Bakr said, Yes, by Allah, I like that Allah should forgive me. And then resumed giving Mustah the aid he used to give him and said, By Allah, I will never withhold it from him. 
Another value is the high spirit and the love of competition in doing good things. The companions learned this from Prophet peace be upon him, as he said, when you ask Allah for something, ask for al firdaus which is the best and highest part of paradise. Omar ibn al-Khattab once said, the messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, commanded us one day to give sadaqah. At that time, I had some property. So I said, uh, today I shall surpass Abu Bakr. I therefore brought half of my property. The messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, asked, what did you leave for your family? I replied, the same amount. Abu Bakr brought all that he had with him. The messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, asked him, what did you leave for your family? He replied, I left Allah and his messenger for them. I said, I shall never surpass you in anything. Another incident is that of Kaab al-Aslami, who said, I was with Allah's messenger, peace be upon him, one night, and I brought him water and other things he required. He said to me, ask anything you like. I said, I ask your company in paradise. The Prophet, peace be upon him, thereupon said, or any fill or anything else besides it. I said, that's all I want. He said, then help me to achieve this for you by devoting yourself often to prayer. Another value of the companions is their preference of others' interests to their own ones. Once a, a man came to the Prophet, peace be upon him, and said, I am hard depressed by hunger. The Prophet, peace be upon him, sent to his wives asking for food, but they had nothing. Then the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, who will entertain this man as a guest? One of the companions said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, I will. So he took him home and said to his wife, Serve the guests of the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him. She answered, We have nothing except little food for the children. He said, Keep them busy with something. And when they ask for food, put them to sleep. When the, get and when the guest enters, extinguish the light and give him the impression that, that we are also eating. So they sat down and the guest ate and they passed the night hungry. When he came to the Prophet, peace be upon him, in the morning, he said to him, Allah admired what you and your wife did with your guest last night. Upon this, the Almighty Allah revealed the Quranic verse, they give them preference over themselves, even if they too are poor. In an incident that shows the extent of Al Ansar's altruism and virtuousness, Sa'd ibn Rabi'a, may Allah be pleased with him, offered Abdurrahman ibn Auf, may Allah be pleased with him, half of his wealth. Abdurrahman ibn Auf decently turned down the offer and asked ibn Rabi'a to guide him to the market where he conducted trade and worked strenuously until he became affluent. The companions abided by rightness and were never too proud to revert to the right course of affairs. Thus, Abu Mas'ud al-Ansari reported, when I was beating my servant, I heard voice behind me saying, Abu Mas'ud, bear in mind that Allah has more dominance over you than you have upon him. I turned and I found it to be Allah's messenger, peace be upon him. I said, I said, O oh Allah's messenger, I set him free for the sake of Allah. Thereupon he said, had you not done that, the gates of hell would have opened for you or the fire would have burned you. The Prophet, peace be upon him, instilled in his companions the quality of keeping promises and encouraged them to do so. It is reported that there was a covenant between Muawiyah and the Byzantines, and he was going towards their country, and when the covenant came to an end, he attacked them. A man came on a horse, saying, Allah is most great, Allah is most great. Let there be faithfulness and not treachery. And when they looked, they found that he was um, Ibn Absa. Muawiyah sent for him and questioned him about that. He said, I heard the messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, say, when one has covenant with, P 
people, he must not strengthen or loosen it till, it ter till its terms come to an end or he brings it to an end in agreement with them to make both parties equal. So Muawiyah returned. With that said, I ask Allah to forgive our sins. All praise is due to Allah, the Lord of all worlds. I bear witness that there is no God but Allah, and I bear witness that our Master, Prophet Muhammad, is his valerie and messenger. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, his family, companions, and whoever fo follows their guidance to the Day of Judgment. Muslim Brothers, the Prophet's companions set a good example of how construction through, le through religion could be attained. Each one of them, including merchants, leaders, tutors, etc., had a task that they did perfectly. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, The most merciful of my nation to my nation is Abu Bakr, and the most severe of them concerning the order of Allah is Omar, and the most truly modest of them is Uthman ibn Affan. The most knowledgeable of them concerning what's lawful and what's unlawful is Mu'adh ibn Jabal. And the most knowledgeable of them concerning the laws of inheritance is Zayd ibn Thabit. And the best reciter of the Quran among them is Ubay ibn Ka'b. And every nation has a trustworthy one. And the trustworthy one of this nation is Abu Ubaidah ibn al-Jarrah. The companions' deeds were fruitful. The Prophet, peace be upon him, used to encourage and remind them of what they could do best as a tribute to their efforts. Thus, it is reported that Uthman went to the Prophet, peace be upon him, with 1,000 dinars and poured them into his lap. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, whatever Uthman does after today will not harm him. The companions showed keenness to find out what was lawful and what was unlawful of all things. It is reported that Jarir ibn Abdullah, may Allah be pleased with him, ordered his servant to buy him a horse. So he bought a horse for 300 dirhams and came along with the horse and its owner to Jarir so that he would pay him. Jarir noted that the horse was worthy more than 300 dirhams and kept increasing the price till it reached 800 dirhams. When asked about the reason for what he did, he said, I pledge to the Messenger of Allah to be sincere towards every Muslim. Thus, each companion knew what he or she had to do and never transgressed. In another incident, Abu Bakr appointed Omar as a judge. Omar remained a judge for a year and no cases were brought to him. So he asked Abu Bakr to accept his, his resignation. Abu Bakr asked, is it because judiciary is burdensome? Omar said, no caliph, but this community of believers, this community of believers is not in need of a judge. Each one of them knows their duties, which they perform without negligence. Each one of them loves for his brother what he loves for himself. If one of them is absent, they check for him. When sick, they visit him. When impoverished, they aid him. When in need, they help him. When afflicted, they console him. They provide sincere advice and enjoin what's right and forbid what's evil. How could such people be rivals? How great is our need for considering these good examples of the Prophet's companions and following their good manners in order to communicate Islam's true image of mercy, tolerance, humane values, and peace for all people. O oh God, keep safe our country, fellow citizens, police, and armed forces and bestow peace and prosperity on Egypt and all world countries.